The title of this talk is Introduction to Pharmacokinetics, Part 1. The learning objectives are what is pharmacokinetics, what are the key PK parameters, what are their definitions, how are the PK parameters applied to obtain optimum therapy, what factors can influence pharmacokinetics outcome. A brief outline of the talk is the talk is divided into two parts. Part one deals with absorption related PK, where we'll be talking about such topics as fraction absorbed, extraction ratio, and bioavailability. Part two centers around distribution and clearance related PK, where we will talk about topics such as plasma protein binding and fraction unbound, FU blood plasma partitioning, B to P ratio, volume of distribution, and the different types of volumes of distribution, such as distribution initial, volume of distribution of the central compartment, and volume of distribution at steady state. We will move on to talk about clearance and half-life. The definition of pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. Pharmacokinetics is the science of drug and or metabolite concentration as a function of time, as well as the mathematical relationship that governs them. It could be simply put as what the body does to the drug as a function of time. It incorporates absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion, which gives rise to the acronym ADMI. And sometimes when toxicology is added to that, the acronym becomes ADMET. Pharmacodynamic describes the effect of drugs in relation to concentration. Simply put, it is what the drug does to the body as a function of concentration. The relationship between pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics could be visualized in the panel below where in pharmacokinetics the dose of a given blood is given, rises to a blood concentration which indeed leads to receptor site concentration. The receptor site concentration drives the pharmacological response which in turn elicit the clinical response or the therapeutic outcome. So the link between PK and PD is the receptor site concentration which is key. The goal of pharmacokinetics. The goal of pharmacokinetics is to help select compounds with optimum therapeutic usefulness, that is, the right drug, at the right dose, at the right time, to the right patient, that is, on target therapy. Pharmacokinetics terminology. The panel on the right shows the oral profile of a drug that is given. Generally, the concentration starts from zero, rising to a level, and then declining. The maximum concentration achieved is referred to as Cmax. The time to achieve Cmax is called Tmax time to achieve Cmax and the area under the curve which is the total area of the area under the curve is called AUC. The aim of any therapeutic intervention is to have concentrations above the minimum effective concentration MEC and below the maximum toxicological concentration MTC. The idea is to have our drug between this window of MEC and MTC. The separation of these two windows give rise to the idea of therapeutic window, which is an area where we want our drug to be within in any given administration. The volume of distribution and clearance controls half-life. This in turn drives the dosing regimen of how often to give the drug. Clearance in conjunction with absorption controls oral bioavailability, 
which in turn controls how much of the drug is to be given. The half-life is the time taken for the concentration of the drug to decrease by half. The mean residence time is the average time the drug resides for in the body. Clearance is the irreversible removal of the drug from blood. And the volume of distribution is the apparent volume into which the drug likes to distribute. Whilst bioavailability, the rate and the extent to which the drug is presented to the systemic circulation. PK terminologies. We'll be coming across PK terminologies such as fraction absorbed, extraction ratio, bioavailability, force pass, free fraction and fraction unbound, volume of distribution, clearance and half-life. Each of these terminologies should be discussed in detail in the subsequent slides. The fraction absorbed. The fraction absorbed is a fraction of the administered dose that enters the gut wall. The first pass. All drug that is absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract GIT must pass through the gut wall and through the liver and lungs before entering the systemic circulation. Both of these organs, namely the liver and the gut wall, are capable of removing drug by metabolism. You could have efflux and biliary excretion from the liver. Therefore, all the loss that happens to the drug before reaching the systemic circulation is called the first pass loss. The first pass loss, together with absorption, determines the oral bioavailability. When a drug is absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract, it faces one of two fates. It can be delivered to the liver where it's metabolized before some of it is then passed on to the systemic circulation. But oftentimes it is re-excreted into the gastrointestinal tract via the bowel. And when this process occurs, where a drug is absorbed and re-excreted into the bowel by the liver for a second pass in the GIT, we have a phenomenon known as enterohepatic recirculation. Enterohepatic recirculation can often be the cause for the long half-life experienced by some drugs. We we'll move on to extraction. Extraction is defined as the removal of compounds from the blood as it passes through an organ. This could be by metabolism or by excretion. The extraction ratio is defined by the difference in drug concentration entering and leaving the organ. This can be equationally represented as shown where extraction is the difference in concentration in and concentration out into the organ divided by the concentration in. This can be expressed as a fraction, which means it can be less than 1, or if it's expressed as a percentage, when it's multiplied by 100, it can be up to 100%. Extraction ratio can also be defined as the clearance by an organ as a proportion of its blood flow. In this case, extraction by the organ could be written as the clearance by that organ divided by the blood flow to that organ. Oral bioavailability. Bioavailability F is the oral bioavailability which is the fraction of the administered dose that reaches the systemic circulation as the intact parent drug. F is determined by the fraction absorbed and the fraction extracted the extraction ratios by the organs of first pass elimination, the gut, and the liver. In this example, we are using cubes to represent the administered dose orally. So if we gave 100 cubes of a drug to a patient and 80% was absorbed, so the fraction absorbed will be 0.8. And of these, 
80% of the, what that was absorbed. 0.25 of that was actually metabolized by gut wall. Of the 60 that remain, half of that is metabolized by clearance by the liver, leaving us a bioavailable dose of 30 cubes or 30 percent. At this point, it is worth emphasizing that there is a difference between FABs and F, capital F, which is bioavailable dose. It can be seen here that the fraction absorbed is 80 percent, but the fraction bioavailable or of the dose is 30 percent. So, though people have often sometimes used them synonymously, they are definitely different. Some factors that may affect bioavailability. Absorption can affect bioavailability, and um, these are the ideal values for absorption. We want an ideal absorption to be more than 100 nanometers per second, ideal solubility of more than 250 micromolar, reasonable ionization as it's only the unionized drug that can pass through the gut wall. Food can affect the absorption of a drug or it can hinder the absorption of a drug. And we have to come with efflux pumps such as PGP. The image to the right of the slide shows the different ways by which drug can traverse the gut wall. It can go across the gut wall transcellularly and it can go paracellularly in between the cell junctions. These two processes are passive in nature. It can also be transported transcellularly via an active process which is carrier mediated or sometimes our drug can be effluxed by such pumps as PGP, which limits the amount being absorbed. And sometimes it can be by endocytosis or phagocytosis, which are specialized means by which drug can be transported across the gut wall. Clearance. Clearance by metabolism mainly should be less than 95.2 microliters per mean per milligram of protein, ideally, or less than 5 mils per min per gram of liver when it is corrected for liver weight. Permeability. Permeability is controlled by the degree of lipophilicity, where the ideal lipophilicity is between the values of 1 and 3. Thank you for your attention. We come to the end of part one.